Greetings, my beautiful infinite beings. I know I haven't been posting for a while because I was creating this video and I had a lot of problems with it. So I had to re-edit it two times from scratch because my computer was a little crazy, dude. <laughs> This is going to be an interview with my inspiring fruit friend and a soulmate for spiritual knowledge, Banana. As we go through questions in this interview, I'm going to hop up with my experience as well here and there, but mainly it's going to be Banana's experienced and inspiring speeches. Speeches. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Also, my kind apologies for all of the glitches and snitches that you're going to see in this video because my computer just couldn't handle it. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Let's make this like a really high interview. Like, you know, high. Uh, I mean, naturally. yeah, I feel like we're like naturally high. Seriously, yeah. regardless. Especially, Especially you. you. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I'm telling you, like, the breath work and, like, the meditations, those are the main thing. Like, I haven't been as consistent with my breath work, but when you do breath work, it's like you're at total peace. Like, a few days ago, I was doing, like, breath, breath work in the field, and it was just, like, it feels like I, the only place I need to be is in this field doing this thing right now. Like, there's not in other, any other thing that was taking my attention, so. A little bit, there was a period of my life when I did it for two weeks every day. Mm -hmm. I right. did the Wim Hof breath work yeah definitely definitely and Wim Hof is like pristine I was so fascinated by how it can instantly just switch you from being in one mood to a different one yes. it is just like a mind blow of reality Wim Hof is probably like the longest one I do and I feel like it's the most well well known on as well and it's like it's so simple you just because every day I just like watch the video click it and then it's like he literally guides you to the entire thing so one mom is definitely like a saint, almost like a prophet to me. <laughs> okay, uh, it's good we talk about breath work, but let's get into fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is your personal experience uh, with your diet and how did you end up eating fruits? Mm, okay, so kind of like a history upon how I got to the fruit. Um, so I was raised on like the standard American diet. It's funny that they call it the standard American diet because it literally is like SAD, like it's a sad diet. <laughs> Luckily... I didn't eat like um a lot of fast food because my mom, well, my family is like Haitian. So my mom just like cooked majority of um like Haitian food. So I never was really huge on like fast food and like snacks. My mom would say even when I was younger, I never was big on like candies and like meats. And then when I was November 2015, I came upon this video called The Greatest Speech You Ever Hear by Gary Yurowski. I want you to know I don't live in fantasy land. I'm well aware that animals are suffering and dying just because we're here on the planet with them. And this is the kind of time I was kind of like waking up until like my, my weirdness started to expand. And I thought he was going to speak about like chakras, the government, aliens, conspiracies. And he started to speak about um, the animals and how we treat them. And after I saw that like one video, I'm like, mom, this is the last piece of meat I want to eat. I'm like, done. Because after I saw what they were doing to the animals, this is like me, my like chest hurt. So after that, I kind of quit cold turkey and like shout out to my mom because she made like the transition like a lot easy because she would still cook like the regular Haitian meals she just wouldn't add the meat so it was like I was just like in like one week I was just, like flipped entirely mm -hmm. so that was in like 2015 and around I, I usually say around 2019 but like this fruit consciousness has gradually been the thing because I remember even when I was this vegan at I'm on like the school lunch thing right they would give out like the meat and the dairy stuff right and I basically like I would trade and barter everything. So like, I would take all like the dairy and meat stuff and then I'll like, I'll trade it for like the fruit, the fruit cups or like the veggie mm -hmm. steams or whatever. Like even back then, I was always, just, I didn't know how or why, but I'll always, I'm like, oh fruit, that's healthy. Let me just get like the cup fruit, whatever. So even back then mm -hmm. it was in my consciousness. And then around like 2019, 2020, um, I started to date this girl who was like influenced by like Dr. Sabi. And she was like raw, like vegan. I was like, oh, you're raw vegan? Because I thought like vegan was the pinnacle. Even though I'm like, oh, I'm vegan, I'm lit. But then it was like, I was like, oh, you're raw? Oh, like there's another level. So um, being connected with her helped. And then I was also working at this raw restaurant in Philadelphia called Audrey Live in Germantown. If you're in Philadelphia, I highly recommend you check it out because Ms. Beth, she's been sure. raw like vegan. Yeah, it's, it was amazing. She's been raw vegan for like 42 two years. And like being in that raw restaurant just helped a lot of my journey. 
And also Ted Carr and Sweet and Natural Living were probably the first like fully like fruit, like conscious like people I saw. And he was like, what I eat in a day as a fruitarian. And I'm like, you're just eating mangoes? I love mangoes. It's so, like, ever since then, I kind of been um, trying it. And then I'm um, going to Woodstock in 2021 and Chronic Raw in 2020. Just being around more fruit people has helped. And that's kind of the history I got, how I got into this diet. And in terms about um, my experience with it, the main reason like I'm so adamant on the fruit is you just feel holistically better. I feel like I'm a better human being when I eat it. Like not only for myself, but for my like loved ones, for my friends, for my business partners. Like anyone who interacts with me when I'm like fully on fruit is like I feel like I'm like a better person. Like now, sadly, I'm not on it like as adamant because it's like I have a lot of other like financial stuff to like work on. But like still fruit is like my like North Star in a sense. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Let's say it's not about um speed, it's about the di- direction. So regardless, fruit is yes. still like my main focal point. But yeah, that's our fruit, Jenny. So you came to this lifestyle mostly because of animals, as I suppose. That was your first yeah, inspiration. Well, yeah, yeah. Veganism, yeah, was like definitely for the and the um animals a hundred percent. But what is your opinion about animal ethics in overall? My opinion uh, is really, it's beautiful because I feel like it's kind of multifaceted and multi-layered because I don't even hurt ants or like flies or like, I don't even hurt insects, you know what I mean? And I, I feel like um I was influenced by the Dharmic faiths a lot and like they have this concept of ahimsa, which means like non-harming or not like harming like a human being or like other beings, right? So it like kind of felt like hand in hand with like, veganism because i'm like i can't it makes my chest hurt to even think about hurting an animal so why would i ever eat one you know what i mean like if, if i'm not able to like actually do it myself i'm not going to eat it. And i feel like i don't want to get too like metaphysical or like too like spiritual or like too religious but it's like if another being has like a life like all right a basis like a basis of like karma in general if you take something else life right and you're eating it. And plus, like, they stuff them with hormones. They be stressed out. Like, we we know that we're a product of what we can consume, right? So if you're mm. eating an animal who is stressed, hormone-filled, like, biochemically deranged, like, and you eat that and you consume that, you're going to take it on the energy. And, like, for me, on both sides, for the, like, health side, for the spiritual side, I just, I, even, even thinking about it, it's, like, it's, just, it's weird and icky to I don't judge like judge people based upon what they do. I just like these are just my ethics. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to like kill an animal. Like I'm not going to eat meat. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I of course would pray and wish everyone has the same level of like ethics. But if they don't, that's on them. But yeah, that's where I, I stand for it because I I can't wait, like hurt animals. This is not my thing. What do you think about people who say that they love animals but they still consume <laughs> meat and eat meat? Yeah. Yeah, it's like pure hypocrisy and also programming. Because I feel like Mm -hmm. if people actually knew, because the thing is, I didn't know in my head when they talk about milk and meat, you see like the little uh, commercial with like the cow and like the field and the old farmer milking it. But it's like in 2022 in modern society, that's not how it actually is. The thing is, they give you a fictitious image of what animal agriculture is when it's not actually the true image. You feel me? So I feel like a lot of it is just people lack awareness and they lack like knowing. You feel me? Because I, I would like to think if people knew better, they would do better. They, you feel me? So as soon as I watched like um that video about Gary Yurofsky, um, the greatest speech you will ever hear, and then I watched uh, Earthlings and Earthlings. Cow and like Cow, uh, Cow Spe- Cow Spiracy, yeah. and all of these uh, these um other documentaries. It's like once I knew that, I could not unsee that stuff, like especially earthlings. I feel like if someone is able to watch earthlings and still eat meat, mm-hmm. that I don't even have words for that. Because <laughs> if you see that stuff and you still do it, that's kind of beyond my like, I, like. We only see meat in like packages. We never really see it actually like, like the slaughter. Like if people would go to like a slaughterhouse and like see or even like a meat shop or whatever and actually see the animal, it's like. It's disgusting. We aren't like attracted to that, but they like package it 
and they marketed so where it was like, oh yeah, just like a little burger. But it's like, no, this is that's death, you know. So I feel like a lot, a lot of it, people just don't have the proper image in their head, and they've been programmed to view and believe something else. I definitely think that people who eat meat, they need to see how it's been made to their place. Yeah. For animals, they owe them to watch Earthlings, <laughs> at yeah, least. Yeah. I feel that it's been really hidden from society how these animals been yes. treated, what they've been fed, what conditions they've been living in. If they would see that, they would just simply stop buying it. Do you think that your connection with animals has somehow changed since you stopped eating them? Like maybe it improved in a way or you feel them, maybe you're more sensitive towards them? Uh, this is actually a very beautiful question. I would say no sadly because it's crazy because it's like i went vegan in 2015 but my first time seeing like an actual cow was like really like last month in a sense because i live in like an urban environment so i don't i'm not really a lot around like no animal like sanctuaries i'm excited for when i have like when i'm around more animals and such because i'm not really besides my like mom's dog i don't really i don't i'm not really around as much animals but of course i still like I love and respect them. Like, I, I love and respect them like the same way I respect, like, a plant or, like, an insect. Like, I respect, like, any being or thing that is in their existence, it has automatic respect. You feel me? So I have re respect for them, of course. But to say it's changed, not really, because I haven't really been in, around as much animals as, like, I feel like most vegans are. Because a lot of, like, mm -hmm. vegans, you'll see them at, like, animal sanctuaries and all that. I've never really been to those, but I definitely do want to visit them more in the future. Yeah. Well, I want to share my experience, how actually my connection with animals has changed a lot since I've been mm -hmm. going vegan. So I always used to have pets in my house. Uh, I had mm -hmm. three cats. Uh, in the past, I had even two dogs. Like in my grandma's house, we had a dog. Uh, like I've been surrounded by animals, pets, and like I live in a countryside. Come on, like I, I see yeah. cows outside pretty often. I oh, see wow. horses. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, maybe it's my mind and placebo working in this way, but I feel that my communication with them has telepathically somehow improved and they can mm. sense my emotions better and I can sense mm. what they are trying to transcend to me better. I don't know, maybe because also veganism and uh, all of this stuff has kind of shifted me to this spiritual development as well more because I've been a lot more spiritual since uh, I've quitted eating animals, I quitted like all animal pro animal products. This in combination, it made me kind of like feel the reality more, feel the animals more. I think animals yeah. are extremely intuitionally sensitive yes. beings, as yeah. we are as well actually, but we have lost the connection with it. And they feel if you have gained the connection back and they also, they feel that they can actually transcend something to you and that you will pick it up. There's like, we only perceive like a small amount of like the electromagnetic spectrum and like orically and like how you like smell. All right, so example, if you're eating dense stuff, you're going to smell different. So your dog is going to pick up on that. But if you're mm. eating some, a different diet, you like just pick up on all of that stuff. So it kind of like makes sense. Because I feel like in general, the more clear your diet is, the more clear your channel is, the more sensitive you become. And I feel like you, you'll be able to like sense the energy of like animals and like pets more you you can send people's energy better on this diet as well yeah i have another question for you about exercise <laughs> like do you do a lot of exercise um and how how it has like how your power has improved how your strength has improved or decreased <laughs> i don't know you tell yeah. me <laughs> recently like a couple months ago i got like a planet fitness membership right and it's like ah. Oh. I really got to go back to the, the gym is late. But yeah, like going to like the gym, it's, um, I feel like I like it a lot more because I love calisthenics and I feel like um, in this diet, there's a theme of like everything is natural. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's themes like, oh, we would have been swinging through the jungles and doing calisthenic workout and that's how we would have been fit. That's cool, right? I like, I believe that. That's cool, right? But like, I want results. You know what I mean? Like what is going to get me the results I want? And the thing about, the, um, the gym or like weight lifting instead of like body lifting is like with weights you could kind of like push your like you could go like you could push yourself a lot more you feel me i'm like it's funny people saying oh you eat meat you'll get bigger i'm like bruh like when i ate meat i was the same exact like weight. like spiritually you know like energy like stays in the body so if i stay at the same weight 
I feel like that kind of correlates like my energy has kind of been consistent. That's kind of how I feel about it. Like I'm I'm person, I do so much mental and like spiritual disciplines, right? So me going to the gym, it kind of like puts my blood or my energy back like in my body in a sense. So for me, it's like, it's like the perfect puzzle. Cause I feel like in terms of like the mental and the spiritual, I'm kind of like really mass, well mastering that realm, but like bringing it back to the physical kind of like, it's like the, bringing the two perfect puzzle pieces to like get like the meditation, the breath work, the fruit and the gym. Like you are like on every axis, you're like going like max now. So it's been a lot of fun going to the gym. I do want to become like the fittest, buffest, like most healthy, vibrant, fruit-based being in this realm. Because it's like, it's, I will, 100%. Because <laughs> if I'm like healthy, wealthy, buff, shining, gl glowing, like vibrant, and I'm on fruit, like, like in the future, once people ask me like with everything in life, when people ask me you know, like, how did you get this, this much money? How did you get your body like that? I'm like the fruit. Like everything is going to correlate back to the fruit. So yeah, I definitely feel like there's a lot more energy when I'm on fruit. I do have to experiment a lot more going to the gym on a consistent basis, but yeah, health yeah, yeah. is yeah. like exercise and movement is like major. And I recommend everyone, regardless of your diet, just go out. Cause I feel like we live such a sedentary lifestyle now, but I feel like human bodies were meant to like move and be active. So going to the gym or like calisthenics or like running, biking, cycling, whatever you do, well, yeah, you can have any yeah. exercise. In, any in exercise, that's true. Yeah. yeah, you can uh, go for a jog, you can go for a really long walk every day, or, yeah. you know, something that keeps you moving, because if you yes. move, then you feel this, you feel that you live, in a way, because yeah. you are here to experience physically the world, and yeah. your body is the most physical thing that you can experience, and just let right. it move, let it thrive, let it go out the borders, uh, expand your frames and your strength. And for me as well, fruits have uh, been a major thing to get my body moving. Yeah. Since I've started to implement mainly fruits in my diet, I feel that my body is just, it wants to move. I don't know, I just feel that I'm thriving. I feel that I'm blessed with energy every day. Yeah. I used to feel uh, a lot of tiredness yeah. i was always making excuses to go out for example i just wanted to stay in comfort stay in my place yeah my boyfriend was always oh let's go let's go for a walk let's go to the gym let's go there to there and i was like yeah yeah let's go <laughs> but in my head i was like no yeah. fuck i don't want to go anywhere <laughs> now i am like sad when i don't do something <laughs> when i wake up i don't feel this feeling that you know, sometimes people wake up, they cannot wake up even. They feel that, oh, it's morning, I, uh, I have to wake up. I used to feel like this, and I felt yeah. like my face is bloated and that stuff, and it yeah, was really yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. now, I just... And I'm awake. Just, yeah, and I'm yeah. awake. It's fine, it's all good. It was different. Like, on the cookery, waking up, it takes way longer. Like, it's just like, it's like... You have bricks on you, you got it like you're in mud and like you're kind of just trying to like <laughs> wake up out of it. Well, I'm free, you just hop like yeah, right up. So that's like, like one of like right. the main things. And also, like going to the bathroom feels like different. Going to the bathroom mm. is like quicker, smoother, smells better. And once you clear what comes into you, everything that comes out to you is a lot easier and like seamless. Like if I'm in the bathroom for more than like three, two minutes max, there's an issue. Like seriously, you know what I mean? Because you shouldn't be. You should be straining, you know what I mean? I feel like no, that shows no. that you should be eating like more like fruit or more like um subtle things. Sometimes the mind could have a bit more influence. So, so even if I'm on like cooks up, I, I gotta get out of the habit of like mm. demonizing it so much because I feel like that process makes it more dense. Even like whatever you think about sun before you eat it kind of changes the structure of it. Even if I'm not a hundred percent where I like to be the fruit now, right? It's still like my focal point like there's still like the main thing i talk about focal point you feel me so I always focus on like where i want to be and not only like where i'm at so yeah that's an aspect as well um, yeah. how do you think what is uh the financial side of all of this um how should people financially do they need to 
financially prepare themselves to be mostly on food and how it's been in your journey? Wait up. Uh, shout out to, um, I gotta begin. <laughs> shout out to like <laughs> Ronnie Smith, the um, creator of the, you, the like, yeah, Ronnie's cool. The UK Fruit Fest and the Love Fruit podcast. I'm definitely check it out if you can. But he made a post. He was like, oh, what has been your biggest thing you learned on like this fruit? He's like, and like, I know it's like a simple thing. I'm like, oh, I am my room. You need money. And then he like on coming back, he was like, what diet does need money? I'm like, oh, true. In terms of money, though, I've spent the most on fruit. Like the whole, the whole, what's it like every week or the market every week. And like every time I go, it's either I spend between like a hundred and three hundred max, like one time, right? So it's like, it's always range between like a hundred and like three hundred. So it's really In just about, yeah, I, I got a budget better, but. <laughs> For over here, like that's really how stuff be running. So buying it wholesale is like a, mo- a lot more cost effective, but also it's like a bit more time, and you gotta have a base of storage, and you gotta have a car, so it's like a bit more steps to it. Like you should be like a budget and an accountant master with fruit. And it's like fruit is always mm-hmm. the main priority. Like uh, it's really about what you value in life. You feel me? Because people spend like forty dollars on like alcohol. People pay, people spend like forty fifty dollars at like a restaurant, on like a like a, a day. People spend like sixty dollars on Uber Eats. So it's not that it's expensive. It's like, what do we prioritize in life? So if, I, I don't feel like we should ever make excuses because I feel like excuses kind of shut your brain off. But we should always think, nah, I can't afford it. How can I afford it? It's not a thing. So even if you don't have a job now, even if you don't have this or that, just try and think how. Oh. We are infinite beings in a finite form. So if we're saying we're, in, we're infinite beings and we cannot get fruit, it's like, what? Like, that's like, this is the simplest thing to get. So... Where is your 24 hours going? We only have a limited time in a day. So it's like, it's all about where we spend that time. And it's very similar with money. Because money, if you're working a job, money is basically a distillation of time. Because like, usually it's like, well, this block of hour equals like this amount of pay. So it's like, mm. how you spend your time and how you spend your money, it's how you spend your life. You really? So it's really just about how you budget your energy. People all be like, oh, like I'm an energy master. I'm a Reiki. It's like, that's cool. But it's like, how do you budget your time and money, because that's your energy. You know I mean? You talking about like your energy, man. So you should be able to budget your time and your money, because yeah. Well, for me, definitely priority is fruit as well. Like for my money spending, I don't spend a lot of money on fruit right now because I live with my family and they do yeah. buy fruits. They do support me in this field as well, Love which it. I'm extremely Love. grateful for. Yeah. Because I also feel that this financial side uh, is mostly excuses in my opinion. I think that you can always have options. For example, I don't live in a hot climate. Uh, I don't like have a lot of variety of fruits here in Latvia, like especially the mm. exotic fruits, mm. which I love the most. <laughs> You can always, as I said before, dig into bananas and dates because... Yeah, thanks. Staple. Yes, they are a really good source of all of the micronutrients, a really good source of all of the proteins, amino acids and everything. It has a lot of... It is sweet. It's from the sweet um, sweet fruit group. So mm-hmm. it will give you a lot of energy and you feel full after eating them. Of course, you can get okay. bored eating just bananas and dates. <laughs> at some point yes but i mean if it's if it's uh, like a uh, option that you can use right. why not use it it's at least like you know for a while you can right. still do it and it will be better for your body than just doing nothing i cannot stop thinking about these priority things that you said because i really feel that people they just spend their money and they don't know where it's going a lot of times you can actually spend more money healing yourself after damaging yourself with the wrong foods mm, yeah. uh, in the future then yeah, you yeah, would yeah. spend yeah. and prioritize your money on Thanks. quality uh. food i didn't have a lot of money when i started this journey going through a breakup i quit my job in london i needed to move to latvia and i was empty i had like also like your mindset as you set your mind because if you will yeah. think that mm, i don't have the money i will do it like later when i will earn and that stuff yeah then yeah. it will be like, like this for you i was meditating on thinking ah, now i am fruit based now i will try to do my best i will do this yeah. this and that and that and it came to me my dad started buying me bananas my friends started to visit me and they gave me like 
bunch of bananas. Uh, <laughs> my yeah. mom, every time she sees me, she like uh, <laughs> she she gifts me dates or bananas or other yeah. fruit like grapes and that stuff. Every each person who has seen me here and has visited me here, they always bring fruit with them because they know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because I feel like once you like speak what you are, people will kind of try and hold you accountable to that. And you know, as you said, like dates and like um, oh my god, you want to first start my journey? I used to like all oh, I used to just get like a box and it's like monumental like <laughs> dates. I love dates even now. I haven't had dates in like a while, but I will say it's kind of there's a tire list. You feel me? Like it depends upon where you're at in the world, depend upon your like job or like your uh, uh, occupation or whatever. The quality of things, and this is even outside of diet, the quality of things you're able to afford is different depending upon how much like cash flow That's you have right, in a sense, yeah. right? So if higher, like in my head, more money to me equals more fruit and more land and more fruit fest. Like crazy, because in the past, I used to like take um in in theogens or like um psychedelics, right? And like in my head, I'm like, okay, like 10 or $15, that's like a tab of acid. But now in my head, 10 or $15 is like a box of mangoes. You have to like build on the foundation to make this diet a lot more appealing. Ideally, it would have like the sweetest, highest water content fruit like possible. If you're able to like, mm. just like monomil, like super high quality, like mangoes and like, pa like, pa yeah, um, pa yes. like, pa like payas, you're in like heaven, but you got to start where you're at. Like that's the thing with this diet. Like, cause everyone starts mm. at a different place. I don't feel like anyone will reach perfection, but I feel like perfection is a worthwhile thing to reach for. First, when I heard fruit tan, I'm like, oh, you only eat fruit. But me being around more fruit-based people, I'm realizing, oh, it's like 90% fruit and like 10% cook, or like 95% fruit and like 10% cook. Yeah. And that's fine, but I still feel like the fruit is a worthwhile thing to like reach for regardless. And I feel like we should definitely um start where we are, but also not give up or limit ourselves. I think that people should also focus just, you know, um keeping it as raw as possible maybe so yeah you can always eat yeah. a lot of veggies they're not gonna be yeah. as satisfying as fruits i would use them really as you mentioned in your video maybe as supplements uh, yeah. to <laughs> to kind of you know um fill fill in the gap of getting yeah. some yeah. nutrients but yeah. for sure it w i wouldn't take it as a main game for my absorption of food course right. it should be fruit because it's more filling how has your social life changed uh, since you've gone mostly fruit yeah uh that's the best question 2021 and like this year 2022 have been like the highest points of my life like mm. and i'm like 23 now right so like literally like the best points of my existence but um kim and jeremy were the first like fruit-based people in philly who i knew were like posting fruit as well and, like I, I met them and like they uh, there were the couple I was saying who had like the kind of the system set up place and like they went to like the whole So going to see them, it's like all right. So it's like you know how they have BC B like B um B before Christ and AD after Christ. It's like before Kim and Jeremy in my life, and it's like after Kim and Jeremy. Like after I met Kim and Jeremy in my life, is like everything just exploded because like they like introduced me to like more people when this raw and fruit space is going out to like more events, going out to more it's, like just track like I've traveled more ever since then and i've met more fruit and raw based people in this community and that has been the most liberating experience of my existence covid was probably like the best time of my life why because i was still traveling i was going out my friends had like this cabin um party for like a week and like the like this cabin is like a like 13 raw vegans that's in a cabin and then in 2020 i was planning to go to woodstock but it, it kind of didn't happen so i went to this yeah. smaller event called like panic raw literally the highest point of my existence it was a beautiful event like yoga sound healing meditation men's circles women's circles raw fruit like there's everything you can imagine right and then at the end we were in like this group circle just giving gratitude for the event right and then i was like oh group hug group hug right and our friend jimmy he was like oh get in like the middle right so i'm in the middle of like 20 people like hugging me and like after that cry like tears of joy for like 20 minutes straight like it was like highest point of my existence you feel me and then after that um Last year, I went to like Woodstock for the first time in 2021. Amazing. So, out to my friend, um, uh, am I gonna forget her name? Uh, probably. Anyway, shout out to my friend. <laughs> she was like, she asked me when I was at Panorama. She said, Well, have you been to Woodstock? I'm like, Oh, no, I'll go next year. She's like, Oh, yeah, I could tell because 
like Woodstock is like product raw, like ten times more. Because like Woodstock, they just like like four hundred. Well, I think like 300, 400, 500 people, like raw, vegan, like there's water, there's like uh, go-karts, there's a ton of buildings, football, so I, like any sport, any activity, biking, like raw chefs, durian parties, dance, music, yoga, like any, like any, like bro, all the raw and fruit-based things you could feasibly imagine were there. And it was just like an ocean of love. I remember before I was telling, um, and Jeremy and Cam, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to Woodstock. I'm gonna be at every single talk because they have like every day they have like a schedule of like speakers. So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go to every single speaker. He was like, bro, you're not gonna be able to do that. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm gonna go to the speakers. Like, bro, it's like, there's so much. much happening. You're not gonna be able to do it. So I remember I look at the schedule like the first day, right? I went to like one or two events. After that, I never went to any other talk because like every single person felt like a speaker. Like, because every single person had their like profound health or like spiritual wisdom like every single person felt like a world and like a universe into themselves and it's kind of like you got like sucked in like orically it's like every single person is like you just and like you just didn't want to like separate and it was just like phenomenal so my social life has kind of like exploded since it's died and that's probably been it's literally been the best thing in my life like literally like i cannot recommend it enough like if you're on the free raw stuff go to the woodstock free festival or go to the you the like uk fruit festival go to the amazon fruit festival go to the dutch fruit festival like any fruit fest you could find go to it and keep going i guarantee you're going to elevate in all aspects of existence and like health wealth relationships fine like i cannot recommend it enough my best friends they all live in a different state now because before my social life was kind of like partying events showcases acid weed alcohol parties basically that was like basically like artists like just like that type of energy and now since i've been around a more holistic group of people my life has gotten phenomenally better so i recommend anyone on this diet even going there's a lot of fruit-based uh, facebook groups as well so like there's like facebook groups there's always like a ton of other groups online as well so if you don't have anyone in your like irl know that we're in the digital age and you can tap into any frequency you want you I, I gotta plug this. The, U, the um, <laughs> Love Fruit podcast by Ronnie Smith for the UK Fruit Fest. Go listen to that podcast. If you're on this fruit and raw based diet, go listen to that podcast because he's interviewed like hundreds of people, like very prominent people in this raw and fruit space. You're you're watching this video, so you you know how how to work a phone. You know how to Google stuff. Look up like uh, fruit Facebook groups or fruit Instagram or fruit you, like YouTube and just tap in. You know because I know like not everyone has. A whole loving collect uh, collect community around them, but online mm -hmm. we can still tap into the frequencies. But yeah, more social so life has been beautiful to say the least. But yeah. Also, would suggest to people to get into forums, uh, yeah, okay. socialize with people, search for people on YouTube. The way I found Banana, like it's, <laughs> I just found his video <laughs> on YouTube, and then I just communicated yeah. with him. So. Yeah. yeah, just don't be afraid to communicate with people. I was actually thinking about a lot of people that they are not going to even answer me, you know, <laughs> like if I yeah. text them because they have yeah. so much followers. They're doing this unique thing. Yeah? But try, always try yes. to text people. Um, tell them your story. I don't know. Tell yes. them how you've been doing. Tell them that you're doing the same thing and you need some inspiration. Yeah, they will respond yeah. because people on this lifestyle, they are so open what i noticed my social life has changed also a little bit there have been people who i inspired mm -hmm. a lot and they send me pictures of them like having some fruit oh, meals that's beautiful yeah that's the most exciting thing yeah that makes my heart so warm yes, i honestly absolutely. just appreciate that and there have been people who have been judging me and kind of like you know telling me that i'm doing the wrong thing that i'm gonna end up being in a hospital as well i'm gonna do a video about my blood test pretty soon so there were people who were just really negatively kind of reflecting themselves in me i also gained a little bit more clarity and started to perceive people in the most more raw kind of a vision there are some people that you just don't feel like resonating with energies anymore and I started mm -hmm. to sense that on a more intense yeah. level. It definitely so is. Yeah. I just 
erst, erst people, erst. And there now I have like only a few people that I communicate with, but I'm so yeah. happy that I have them. Social life has also been amazing since since yeah. I've turned into fruits. Yeah, and I'm making more connections, better connections. <laughs> and I love right. them. I definitely agree with what you were saying about um people should reach out on this diet, like honestly, because I feel like anybody who has great success in a field. Usually people would deem it like, oh, they've achieved so much like success, so they probably won't respond to you. But I feel I see it's oftentimes the opposite. And a good example I'll use is her name is um raw food ro romance or like um IG, right? And it's like she literally over responds to like every single kind like you, you know when like people respond so quick that it kind of like throws you off. Cause in my head of my own, she has all these followers. I'm just commenting on something really quick and then like like a second it's like response. I'm like, what the heck? But it's like that's her like she loves it. You know, she like she loves inspiring people. She loves this like for like more than this diet. And I feel like it kind of makes sense. Cause if you like su succeed, right? And you see it in someone else trying to do the same path, of course you want to drop like gems on them and like everything. So I definitely agree with that. If you're on this free and raw diet, I feel like you should be creative. I'm gonna like promote this a lot more. I feel like people in this lifestyle, we sometimes underestimate the power of this. You feel me? Because it's like this diet literally changes people's lives, changes people's like legacies. Like people is like their fathers, them, their children, like really changes the entire lineage of like the person's like energy and spirit so i feel like all free and raw based people should like share as much as feasibly possible because it really like it may seem so like oh i'm just recording like a little video oh, i'm just recording like little posts but it's not little you know what I mean? because majority of the planet they're still eating dead stuff so us like pro like for like more than health and like fruit is like the pinnacle and also in general with like any form of success in life you're always going to have people who are kind of against or not resonant with it you know what i mean that's like regardless you know what i mean it's like the same thing with money like if you start making a lot of money in business a lot of friends are coming like oh da, 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 you this you that but it's like energetically this is going to happen so i feel like um we have to interact with those people with love i like a perfect example i have a video on my channel my most viewed like video yeah it's like three like three k or so now like 20 or 25 percent of the comments is just like oh I actually want to speak about this one comment. He was like, bro, you're not going to be able to, like, get it up on this diet. I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? It's like, people say, like, anything. He was like, yeah. He was like, bro, just, like, eat some, like, grass, like, grass-fed beef. It's like, the thing is, I like and comment on every single thing, positive or negative. Even because I like, I like love them regardless. Because a lot of people, they wouldn't give it energy because they, like, deem it as the person that's trolling. But I don't know the person's energy. They probably genuinely come, like, Kind of like, kind of like, serve for me. They, they like, they like see. They see me eat a fruit. They're like, oh, he, he's about to die. And I'm like, nah, bro, I'm good. So it's like, I feel like we should still interact with love and be very respectful because I feel like it's kind of like we're in like an extended family, right? And like we all like represent this diet. You feel me? So if like no one else has ever met a fruit based person and you're mean and like rude and like you don't speak to them, they're gonna like view it as like everyone that is doing that diet is like is this way. So I feel like we should try and represent the best energy and really like interact with like love and you have to have thick skin path you feel me because i'm so adamant on this diet i could like even yesterday i was speaking to like a meat eater in their face as we're eating fish and everything you feel me and like i'm so adamant, like i'm so pristine on where i'm at you cannot move me like this is me bro i don't like you could do whatever you want but i'm not nothing will dissuade me be adamant on where you are be passionate about where you are. And the other day, I want to say, um, study it. You know what I mean? Because I've like, uh, I just was reading this in the, the magic of thinking big. But the more you study something, the more passionate you get about it. So there's a lot of authors out here. Uh, like one, one of the Bibles is um, eighty ten ten by like Douglas Graham. Oh, also I know like that Mingo. One. It's a really good book. Really yeah, good. Mango. Yeah, I definitely. Um, I gotta read it again. Um, Mango Wazak has Eden Futurianism. Robert Morris has a book, um, Arnold Erit, who else? There's like a lot of like help people in this space. Is it? So definitely like getting like the science could definitely help you have a bit of uh, confidence in it. In terms of knowledge, again, learn about yeah. human physiology, like just simple things, you know, just learn how our body works, how it's meant to digest things. And it's not good to binge on food, right? But in terms of like content, when you're just getting into this diet, I remember when I first was started, I used to watch a ton of videos, like how you do it, da, 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 right? So like at first you kind of gotta, it's with everything in life I'm realizing, you kind of gotta like, um, 
imitate before you like start yourself. Like you do with like speaking, mm-hmm. we just basically steal what are like the people around us say until we speak our own language. And like with walking, we kind of like look how other people do it until we start walking on ourselves. And it's the same thing with this diet. Like I have a lot of respect for people who are like vegan and free based like 20, 30, 40 years ago because there wasn't even no veganism no wasn't even like a thought, in that right? time. You know I mean? There was so yeah. limited envies because it's like we're speaking about fruit and diet now, but anything you want in life, bro, just focus on it because like literally everything we take into the senses. We're contemplating it as we're taking it in. You feel me? And you eat before you eat. You feel me? And that's the other thing about cook, like the cookery. I want, I, I like want to go back to it. Like the energetic amount it takes to think about preparing the cook meal, and then to like c- cook it, prepare it, or store it. In the mental realm, you're already eating it. In the mental realm, it's already taking energy to like consume yeah. before you even physically eat it. Mentally and spiritually, you have to do it first. And it's the same thing with like anything with fruit as well. Before, but the thing I like about fruit, it's simple. You just, oh, I want a mango, cut it, eat it, done. Well, with other stuff, it takes a lot more to even generate the process. So like be very careful what you consume through the five senses because you contemplate what you consume. What you see, what you listen to, who you hear, who you're around, you have to be very particular about that because your mind is a sacred space. Your mind is the most sacred space ever so be very careful about what you consume and if you're ad- ad- adamant on the fruit just consume from people who are adamant about the fruit and like also try and look at people who have been on this diet long term because you were saying last time like a lot of people they use this diet as kind of like a a fad or like a trend to just get like yes, views or like hits or whatever mm-hmm. you know what i mean you have to find people who are like have been on it consistently because consistency like breeds like show like success leads results so if they've been eating fruit and like raw for like 40 years you what like everything they say is this will be like a pure gem and uh do you think like uh, that on this diet uh fasting and like doing all of this uh, stuff is this like extreme or is it needed or is it like personal <laughs> preference more so <laughs> yeah this opinion? is such a uh, i love these questions it's such a beautiful question because i feel like in this space especially during this time this is very impertinent question because the whole fasting detoxing enema colonic type energy and wave it's become a lot more popular it's almost like a achievement or like a badge of like honor you know how like in, in like video games you get like a certain like achievement and then other people could like see like oh you achieved this that or whatever it's kind of like the same thing in this food like, oh i've like i've done this amount of fast or this amount of water fast or whatever so i feel like fasting is a beautiful thing i just want to say that I, initially but also i don't feel a majority of people i don't feel like they really need to, unless you have like a, a actual like a serious physical emotional or spiritual ailment or like a serious thing you're trying to process mm. i don't really feel like these long-term fasts are really like needed i feel like people should learn how to like the like a b the a b c's before they try and like write a book and i feel like fasting it's kind of like a a bit more intricate thing but it's like you know how people say before you break the rules, you have to like understand the rules first, right? That's kind of how I feel, I feel a diet. People are trying to like break the rules in terms of this like fasting for like 21 days or whatever, right? But they literally don't even know how to like sustain themselves on like fruit and like raw and like raw stuff. If you understand like the whole, if you have a good understanding of like the raw and the vegan stuff, cool. Or if you're really trying to get get like rid of like a L A ailment, cool. Like you could do it, right? But just like be very precautious because if you're doing fast wrong, it can really mess you up like energetically, like not only physically, but energetically, mentally, and emotionally. Because the fast kind of like is like a holistic thing, right? So if you do it improperly, it can really mess you up. Cause I've like in the past, I've like originally when I first started on this raw food diet, my ex, um, she introduced me to like dry, dry fasting. Like I was so fast, I'm like, whoa, dry fasting, that's like the next level from water fast. I'm like, oh this shit is lit. Right. So like at first, I was so adamant and hyper on it when I first started my diet right and i tried it like a like a several times a couple months ago and it's like it doesn't feel the same and it doesn't serve me the same you feel me so like that's also the thing it's just like certain things work for certain people so i recommend you like experiment and see how you feel that's like also like the main thing i want to say in like Mm. this whole like conversation see how you feel and think once you're on something i always recommend people go a time like mainly on like raw fruit and whole like food stuff and then go time on like your normal diet, right? And just go back and forth like one week to one week, right? And see 
how you feel and think. Because how you feel and think will definitely show you. Like, once you're, like, I'm telling you, if you, bro, I'm telling you, if you have high-quality fruit and high-quality, like, raw stuff, right, for, like, a week, you're not going to be able to look at reality the same way. You're just not. You're not going to be able to like, Once you have a high-quality sour sop, you cannot look at rice and beans the same. It's just not, like, because your mind is is expanding. Once you expand it, it's, you can't really close it back in a sense. So, um, but yeah, fasting, it's a beautiful thing, but I feel like people should be very um, cautious. In terms of fruit, I've done a couple, um, I've done a four-day apple juice fast, like, shout out to, like, Jeremy, because that kind of, like, certain fast, they kind of, like, mess up your mind, because it's, like, it was a four-day um, apple juice fast, like, I wasn't hungry, and I had energy, and I'm like, oh, why do I even eat? Like, it, it kind of messes your head, because in my head, I feel like we're so, like, like our habit is to just eat, but like if you're on a fast, like you feel good and you have energy, it kind of like rewires the brain. I feel, and I've done like a 11 day mango island, and I was actually inspired by my friend um Alice because she's like what, she's young, she's like six, seven, five, I think, and she did like a 10 day mango fast. I'm like, whoa, you're like younger than me, and you do a 10 day mango fast. So I had I had to go on like um 11 days on mango, so that was um beautiful. So you could and I'm at. Product raw, I did like a three or four day watermelon fast, more or less. But yeah, you don't want to have to fast, right? Like you really don't. You know what I mean? Like just like stick with the vegan, stick with the raw, stick with the fruit. You'll be fine. Just eat. The thing is, eat like a lot. You know what I mean? Like when I eat fruit, with fruit and salads, right? I feel like they're calorically like they're not the same as cook stuff because the cook stuff is like denser, right? But for like fruit, and like raw um salads. Eat more, bro. Like, eat until you're full. Wait, like, an hour to eat more. <laughs> uh, for me, like, fasting, really little experience with it. I did try mm -hmm. intermittent fasting, but I was doing, like, a vegan uh, version of keto diet, I would say. And then mm -hmm. I kind of, like, felt that I need this fast, actually, in a way, mm -hmm. to sustain the results. But... It is not sustainable, guys. <laughs> Don't mm. try it. It is just like it works for a while, but then then it's just like you feel like crap after that. Don't recommend anyone to focus on their protein mainly and do fasting. Yeah. Totally agree that actually, if you want to cleanse yourself, then firstly, change your diet. Be more close to what you're designed to eat. Eat more fruits. Mm. Try raw diets. Yes. Mm. Do like don't limit yourself in energy because that could be really damaging for your body uh, if you try mm. it like on long term. It is a big pressure on your liver. It is a big uh, like an overdose on ketones, which uh, mm. get released from your liver when you're doing this fast and it's a really toxic process. In my opinion, I think you should be really well prepared. You should have a lot yeah, of information 100%. read when before you do like a long term fast. People doing fast on fruit diets and on a raw diet. My opinion for that is it's like just maybe mostly of them are doing it spiritually and emotional reasons mm, for true. Yeah. for spiritual and emotional reasons because yeah. You already have a clean body, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to like cleanse yourself if you are just nourishing yourself with the good nutrients all the time. Like you just, mm -hmm. but it could be really damaging for people uh, like me, for example, with eating disorder pasts. If you're like instantly coming from an eating disorder past to fasting, then I don't think it's really a healthy shift for your mind. Spend at least a little bit of time and. Uh, feel the consistency of your food consumption before you start to get into fasting like i feel like people feel like the like to cleanse to like ascend you know what I mean? like get all the parasites out of you cleanse make your channel like and i do get it even because i do like i study like the dharmic text and like i like also mean like this fruit like stuff. so i do understand but i feel like it's so funny hearing fruit and all these people will speak because you're like oh yeah i gotta cleanse and i'm like Bro, you literally eat fruit and salad. You're literally, you're literally like, the, you're like you're in like the top five percent of like healthy people on the planet. Like you understand? It's like we speak as if we're eating like cheese sticks every other day. Like we're not like <laughs> the way you see it's so funny because like we try and achieve so much, but I feel like we really have to be grateful for what we've achieved. Because even though honestly, if a person even thinks about pescatarian, vegetarian, vegan, 
I clap to you. Because in modern society, the amount of programming we have, if you just, like, push past all that, because, like, to push past probably your, like, exes, your friends, your family, your teacher, your lawyer, like, push past all these people saying, oh, you're doing it wrong, like, to still be vegan or still be free or, like, vegetarian, you have my respect. Because I know it's not, I know the amount of social, cultural, and, like, relationship hurdles people have to get to get to this point. So I feel like we should really um, commend people who are even on this diet. You feel me? And stop trying to like make everything so like perfect. I'm gonna say about a fast. I don't. I wanna make it lifestyle. I don't wanna make it a fast. You feel me? Because I, I remember my, my my Christian friend, right? She was telling me she was on a Dana fast. So basically, I believe they don't eat like processed stuff. They don't eat sugar and salt. And I'm like, oh, like I live your like your fast, your spiritual fast for your religion. I live that. Like, that's my life. You know what I mean? And like, the same with, like, mm. some um, Hindu um, events. I forgot the name of it. It was like a Hare Krishna. It's called a Akadisha or uh, Akadasha or something like that. But basically, they don't, they may, they say, oh, don't eat cooked stuff, mainly eat fruit. And all. I'm like, oh, your spiritual, like, fast is my life. And that's kind of how I want it to be. Like, if I'm going to be on fruit, if some, some people come to, like, Woodstock as like a one week fast, right? And like some people come, come to Woodstock and that's their life. You know what I mean? Like if I'm eating fruit, I want that to be my thing. If I'm like on juice, I want that to be my thing. If I'm on water, I want that to be my thing. If I'm on like whatever I'm on, I want it to be like, oh, not like a week thing. I want it to be like, no, this is me. Like this is every day. This is my lifestyle. This is not just like a one week old oh, fad or thing for me. So, what do you think about breatharianism? Is it real? <laughs> <laughs> here we go here we go like all right so oh man damn what you bringing us to, all right all right i was talking about, I was talking about. All right, i mainly promote fruit but i really do study the preference and not mm. not just the non-diet aspect their psychology like the way that preference think is different because you know like the whole saying mind over matter right they are serious about it. They're like, yo, I program my body, bro, to not need this. And it's like, that's it. So I like to hear how they think. And I like to take on the psychology, even though like my main focus is still fruit now, like in terms of like the amount of power our spirits and our souls and our mental energy has, I really feel like we're divine beings, but it's like the breath people, they take that to like, to heart. Like they're not joking. Like they're like, bro, I'm a divine being. I like, I like what I want is what I will have, what I don't want is what I won't have. You know what I mean? And like, the thing is, I do breath work every single day, right? And we all know breath is the first thing, regardless. Like, all right, first so. Right, first you need. <laughs> yeah, sunlight, water, breath. The breath is the first thing. Like, how long could you last without water? Probably a couple, well, a couple days. How long could you last without, fruit? I mean, food? Probably a, a couple weeks or so, more or less. How long could you last without breath? A couple minutes at max, the the do like do like do like depending on how long you like how good you are at holding it. But mastering the breath, like I yo, if you master the breath, you master everything else. Like not see the thing is the way I was just speaking about fast is the way I also view the breath. Cause now I do breath work. It's just like the hour of me doing different breath breath techniques, right? But I'm going to get to the point in life where that's my life. The the, the, the other thing about fruit that I, the reason I stick on it so seriously, because I feel like fruit and farming because i also want to like like have my own land and have my own fruit so i feel like fruit and farming they kind of have me in a pristine relationship with like mother nature like i'm like mother nature's like kind of like ambassador or like preacher or whatever it's like like my like my religion is nature and fruit is my like sacrament more or less you feel me so i feel like the fruit is like the highest thing that mother nature gave us so a lot of breath people are saying um not to say they aren't real but a lot of breath people i've seen they it's it's so similar to like this fruit stuff because a lot of people say they're on fruit. So in my head, I'm like, oh, you only eat fruit. But it's like, oh no, but I actually, I only eat like 90% fruit and like 10%. Like, I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. People like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, people were like, oh, I'm like breath free. So in my head, I'm like, oh, you only breathe. You don't eat no, but like, no, like, like I do Sometimes breath I work and then I have like, yeah, they'd be like, I have like soups and juices once in a while. I'm like, oh, so you're not breath. Like you're not, you're just like, you just do a lot of breath work and you eat like soups and juices in the meantime. So that's fine. Um, it's just like, in my head, these words, when I hear it, I picture something. But once I talk to people in the actual space, it's not what I originally thought it was. But, and they say that the fact that more people are going fruit and um, breath-based 
like the collective consciousness on the planet is making it easier. Like the fact that me and you are speaking about this right now, someone else on the other side of the planet is going to be a lot easier for them to do it because now there's like more energy towards this vi vi vibration. You feel me? And I heard the same thing with like the breath thing. Like the fact that more people are speaking about it is becoming a lot more easier for people to do it. For sure. The main thing that draws me towards it, um, the a spiritual and emotional equilibrium. Because on fruit, you have a emotional and spiritual indifference. It's like you're kind of like the perfect zen almost. Like good things happen, bad, bad things happen, you aren't swayed, right? And what, what I'm hearing for the breath people is really, we consume through the five senses. And I feel like the, the less you consume through diet, the more aware you have to be on, on the other aspects. It's kind of similar to like someone who is like... um blind they could like hear like better right i feel like that's like it's like it's the same thing with everybody right if you like take away one vibration you have to be aware more so if you're not eating dense stuff you have to be more aware about who you're around what you're listening to your environment nature your clothes it's like your awareness kind of has to shift and expand to like a new gear almost so it's just like it's a very fascinating philosophy of course i don't promote it and i don't speak about it too much because i feel like yeah it's kind of a bit too like heady for people, but in my inner world, know that like I'm studying their practices from like afar. But yeah, fruit is like what I <laughs> promote. I haven't spoke to breatharians in real life. Yeah. None of them. I don't know anyone who does that. I mm. have seen like uh, maybe you know Sky Life, her YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, she mm -hmm. was having like a breatharian with her. Uh, I think a while ago. I'm not sure when, but uh, yeah, he told that he is literally just doing breath work and mm. he was really serious about him not eating at all yeah, just drinking that. urine and coconut water you have not been eating for a year no four years four years so two years i was 80 percent. i would have like one meal a week and then i slowly progressed to fully 100 percent beyond the calories there's something else to be noted that we live in a world of gases the, one of the most proponent gases that we always overlook in terms of the air is nitrogen and carbon. Specifically carbon, because most of our atoms is made up of carbon. So this is why I really focus more on the carbon buildup in the body when it comes to breathing. Right. I barely drink water. I don't drink water really. What do you mean you don't drink water? Mainly coconut water, urine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe it. Yeah, I can see it. I, I don't know if I believe it, though. I think he does have some peanut butter in his closet See? maybe <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> i believe that your version about them like having living on breath yes so being yeah. really focused and aware about their breath 24 yeah. 7 yeah, yeah that's what i believe but they still consume maybe some fluid food yeah or yeah, anything. yeah. yeah. On the that, side, got some that sounds more realistic to me. no because the guy he didn't mm -hmm. look slim he looks uh, literally he looks like he is having food peanut butter <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter yeah. don't look malnourished in any way you're strong you know yeah i don't know but i agree with you that they have a really interesting philosophy everything that we do is based on breath like you can control mm -hmm. literally anything and that's what i feel as well yeah. during my yoga practices during meditation yeah. that Thanks. this yep. is like you can literally control every little cell of your body like every little Thanks. muscle tension Thanks. every little release you can ease that with breath for me breatharianism would be like really to be aware of your breath more and yes. more and yes. as you said live in a breath practice so you said you don't believe in it see but that's like I'm that's the sure. thing no. see that's the thing with like that's the huge psychology like the mind your beliefs shift your reality. Like, that's the thing. And, like, it's funny because I'm rereading The Magic of Thinking Big by David J. Swartz, right? And he, he, this is not, it's a kind of like a entrepreneurial kind of thing, but it's really your mind. Like, we underestimate the power of our thoughts and our mind. That's why I'm so careful upon what I say and what I think and what I do because I'm realizing I'm creating it. Like, I'm projecting, like, my belief, like, the world that you see and the world that I see and the world that, like, the person, like, watching this is seeing is different. You know what I mean? Because the way our lens is, like, shaped is, like, different. Like, we project our thoughts and beliefs and emotions onto the world, and then that's how the world looks to us. And, like, going back to diet, when I eat dental stuff, 
my world is different. You feel me? Like if I if I'm eating like rice and things, like I feel like I'm in a different realm. And like when I'm on fruit, like literally, like in an instant, in a few seconds of eating fruit, it's like the octave of like reality. This is like it's like so it's like it's like when when I'm eating the cookies like this, when it's so it's just like expands in a sense. You feel me? A couple of weeks ago, I was just feeling like so down about like my friend and like our like um connection, right? And then I ate some grapes, right? Literally a few seconds to me after eating the grapes, all those thoughts evaporated. I'm it, when I'm on fruit, and the fact I think better, it helps every single else in my life. Like, I'm a better person. I always say, like, hunger and lust, food and sex are the, like, most ancient and primal of human connections, in a sense, right? So I always say, if people could transmute or transcend their hunger or lust, they're, like, gods in my, like, image. Because, like, usually, like, food and sex are the main things that either bind humans or, like, kind of help them ascend. And that's the other reason I'm so adamant on this diet, because when I'm on fruit, like, energetically, like, I just interact with and feel differently about the world uh, differently. Like my thoughts aren't as like scary or like carnal or like dense or like anything like that. And not, and not, not even to say like the dense energy back because like sometimes you need like more density in your life. You know? But it's just, just depend upon, I'd rather get that density from like something else besides food. Because with food is kind of like, I can't manage it the mm-hmm. best, you feel me? But um, yeah, it's just like, it just helps your mind your heart, your spirit, your body, your relationships, to find it, like, it helps you. Just, like, try it out. Like, I can and, uh, as well, I have, like, the last question that I wanted to... Two last questions, actually. Cool. How do you think, is, like, this experience that you are having right now on Fruit uh, kind of, like, similar to a psychedelic experience which turns into, like, <laughs> mind and consciousness changes? Perfect. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're getting prepared. <laughs> <laughs> a nice one. Good so, yeah. Um, in my past, especially when I was a teenager, I experimented a lot with like um psychedelics. So I've tried to ask it like nine times, I tried shrooms like a handful of times. I used to drink a lot, I used to smoke a lot. And um ever since the going on fruit, like like focus on the fruit more, I've kind of been like more or less like sober. And then like 2021, I spent the majority of the year celibate as well, just really like tuning into my own energy. Cause in my youth, I was always around like substances or I was always around like sex is always around like an external energy and a story is coming to mind I remember so I was to my friend um, and I was speaking to her at like Woodstock and then she was asking me like what are my vices right because she was speaking about like um smoking and stuff like that and how she wants to like get more into like the breath work because she feels like it's more um sustainable and I was like she's like yeah, what are your vices been in and I was like I thought for I'm like uh I don't know, you know, because I don't really, like, I don't have a drink that's shifting my energy. I don't have weed that's shifting my energy. I don't have alcohol that's shifting my energy. I don't have, like, the TV or the movie or the video game or the porn. I don't, like, I think those things aren't really, those things aren't shifting my aura no more. So, like, I feel like that's why I'm so happy and content right now because I don't have any external energies messing with my own energy. And when I used to take acid, I remember... I used to have this thing, I used to call it like a lock grin. Because when, once your ass is like, you're so happy, it's like, you kind of stay, it's like, happy all the time. And I remember a couple years ago, I was eating like, just like mangoes, and I had the same exact feeling, there's like joy, just like happiness. I'm like, wow. Here's me taking the acid that's probably like, find my like, cells in my like, brain, whatever. And I have a lot of friends, they still like, I'll take, as you call it, shamanic healing plants, you know? Of course, I like, I resonate. But I feel like people should take time to understand, because that's why last year I went celibate for a majority of the year to see how do I feel energetically by myself. I feel like if you're a person who's always been in, like, re relationships, spend some time alone. If you're a person who's always been alone, spend some time in relationships. If you're a person who always did drugs, spend some time sober. If you're a person who's always, always sober, at least try shrooms like once at least at least once you don't you don't got to take all the time at least expand your life you at least activate once and go into like the jungle at least once for your spirit but even when like back in the day when i used to like eat dental stuff i always love to explore my consciousness and i like to see how i acted in reacted to my environment in a non sober state so i would drink in school like i would drink and like go to like high school like inside like the class so i love to see how i would react in a different uh, altered state when people are around me. Cause I spoke to my mom while like, and looked her in the eye, like as I'm talking, talking to you now while like drunk, while on acid and while high, perfectly fine. 
So I feel like regardless of like what state I'm in, like I, my energy is so like centered. I could literally like look look you in the eye, perfectly fine. I could be blasted out of my head, but I'm like, oh yeah, like fully conscious with you. You know what I mean? So it's like um, that's what I did. But a lot of people they use it to like escape and kind of fill void. So I can't really like I don't really recommend it as much because a lot of people they don't use it in the same like healing um matter. But yeah, the fruit. I feel like definitely once you're in fruit, you won't even not to say you won't want to do other stuff. But once you're really happy, once you really feel love, bro, once you really feel pleasure and joy and bliss and you're crying tears of joy, you're not going to look at acid the same way. Like at Pranic Raw, I was saying that like I cried like tears of joy for like 20 minutes afterwards. And I remember going to like, like mosh pits and taking like edibles and like acid just to like make myself cry after being hurt. You know what I mean? Just trying to force myself to feel something. You know what I mean? So once you're in fruit, it's like you're so sensitive that these things just like come up naturally and i feel like fruit is like the perfect thing to like help you like trans transition because mostly a lot of people they binge on like really comfort type foods under stress mm. not i, I don't want to say if you're stressed eat fruit but if you are stressed fruit is probably the best thing for you seriously even because it will help you process your emotions like a lot better than a cheesesteak would but yeah um the fruit right. it definitely it's a na na natural high and i recommend it for everyone and if you still take Substances is cool, but try and spend, spend some time just like being in your own consciousness without having like all this state of like consciousness like shifting you too much. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like agree with the the fact that actually fruit feels already like a natural high. Uh, yeah. I can really reflect on that. Did like smoke weed pretty recently, and just for an experimental reason, just to see how mm -hmm. I feel right. high right now, because I didn't feel I needed essentially. Even yeah. though before I felt like I need this kind of a contrasted type of a wave all the time. I felt like a need for it because, as you said, I needed to kind of like express the overload of emotions because I mm. felt a bit more numb than my normal mm -hmm. state. As if yeah. right now I'm really emotional and really sensitive and I don't actually need that. But I did experiment. <laughs> First of all, I was in really good control. Of it because yeah. uh, my body and my mind it's okay I had experiences with weed previously yeah so I'm not scared of it uh, in overall yes but <laughs> uh, I did feel like a little bit of paranoia like how would I feel right now because I'm already like having a high what will mm. be if I would like skyrocket it even mm. more well yeah. I felt a lot of control I did feel that I can use this trip a little bit more productive than I mm. would do it before because before there were times when I was just like chilling and that stuff but here it was I took it more as a spiritual experience for me to yeah, expand yeah. occasionally it is a really good experience to have and I would yeah. stick to something natural like yeah. mushrooms like weed maybe but in an edible form because smoking is not good for you yeah, true, true, true. it's pretty <laughs> harmful and plus you destroy a lot of things that weed is capable to give you during the burning process yeah. it could be healing in some moments of your life like have it as a medicine maybe in a way especially for people who are you know don't like to use this word zombies but <laughs> especially for people who are kind of really zombified in the system yes for them these yeah. psychedelics they could be a really good Seriously, source of information um, I would say that maybe a part of me uh, came into the vegan lifestyle was also through psychedelics yes I do feel a natural high from fruits I do feel extremely sensitive right now I sense people's energies I can even see energy if you like the sensation of tripping <laughs> then you should definitely look into fruits definitely <laughs> yeah i definitely um i wanted to add to that because i'm um, mm. you saying that you kind of experimenting with the weed and i was saying how like last year i went like sober and like um celibate for a majority of the year and like december 31st my friend's like sister she had like um some like um alcohol and like she had weed so i'm like okay it's, it's been a whole year let me try it out so i drunk and like i smoke right and like the only major difference like with drinking i just like i would like certain stuff i would just keep in my head would just like slip out here and there that's one, one thing i did notice you know with the weed not a, like it kind of 
it doesn't do the same thing for me, you know, like, cause it's like, it's the saddest thing. I remember when I first smoked, when I was like 14, I believe. And like, I believe it was 14, like, like the second month of like freshman year of high school, I smoked. And like, at first I remember like walking down the alley, I'm like, oh, this is nothing. And then like, and like, when I got to the street, it's like, I'm like, take me home, brother. This is, this is like too much. It was like too intense for me, right? And after that, I like, I would smoke. And then like, I liked edibles a lot more. I never really, I never was huge on smoking. I like because me, if I'm getting high, I want the whole day. I want it to be like a whole day thing. I don't want like a two, three hour trip. No, the entire 12, 24 hours, mm. block it off for like this trip. That's me personally. The last few times I smoked with weed, especially, I always use the example. It's like a really, really cool X. You used to like really vibe with so heavy. But now when like you see, you see, you like see each other, you're trying to vibe out, but this is not. This is not the same. Like we're just like a different frequency, you know. Like me and we, like we're cool. Like I would, like my specter and everything, but just we're just not in the same place. And this experiment of both like diet, sex, drugs. See where, because the thing is, in both in like diet and like when I'm learning a subject, the perfect example I use in 2020, I was studying um sex magic and brahmacharya, brahmacharya, right? Which is basically the two ends of the extreme. Like sex magic is like the occultists using sex to like manifest with deities and gods and spirits and like brahmacharya are like monks who don't even speak or talk to or think about women ever mm. so it's like basically the extreme side of the spectrum right and i studied both and it kind of creates like it messes with your head a bit even but like find out where you fit between that and experiment yourself you know what I mean because you could have two like things and like see both sides of the like spectrum and i always recommend people do this for everything like study the extremes of both sides and see where you feel comfortable so that's like what the process I'm in now, you feel me? Even being celibate last year, I could say that I love myself a lot more confidence now because I spent like a whole year by myself and I had the fucking blast, right? But also I'm realizing it's not fully necessary. Ooh, don't take things in the black and white, make your own color. <laughs> I love that, yeah. <laughs> Creating quotes on spots. Does this lifestyle has changed your goals towards life? Mm-hmm. It's did everything because your diet that's like that's you bro like that's your body like that's how you pre- like this is your vessel this is your temple so once you clean your temple the way that you perceive all the other temples in the universe is different so one of the like some of my main goals now i feel like this is every because like, if you when speaking to a lot of people in the space we have the same vision it's like we all want land most of uh, want, once we off grid most of us want like abundance of fruit and like a loving like um collecting the a lot of my friends have a very similar like energy so my core of course as much land as feasibly possible as much fruit as feasibly possible as much like my own water my own land my own electricity my own garden my own pets like I just like I don't I want to be so sovereign and me and my family that I don't even need like a doctor or a lawyer or a preacher or a babysitter or a teacher. Like I want to have my family and my community be so vast and so interconnected that we don't need any external people that I've never seen to influence my family. So I plan to have like a huge family and like as much land, as much fruit as possible. Also mm-hmm. on that list is to go to all the fruit fest feasibly possible. Cause like when I speak about money or like um, entrepreneurship, I kind of speak about money kind of more than most people I know because it's like I feel like it's in modern society we can't act as if money isn't a thing like you need money to like pay for your phone bill your electric bill gas fruit like if you're in modern society if you no one you're not in a jungle if you're seeing this you have a phone so you pay your phone bill and that that costs money you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so everything in this modern world called well costs value and like I feel like people's uh, issues with money our form of value has shifted because before value uh, used to be in land or like children or cattle or shells or gold or silver. But now it's like a fiat. It's not, it's not even, we're not even bad. Right. And I gotta say this. In, in 1971, August 15th, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard and the U S dollar is the reserve currency of the planet, which basically means our money isn't back by anything. We're basically, we're, we're creating the basically a fictitious, Values basically based upon our faith and what we believe that makes it real at this point. We're kind of living in like a Disney dreamland of money at this point, right? But regardless, I feel like um I want to take all that fictitious fiat bullshit and basically like make it into like real land and fruit and like houses and mansions and like just like real tangible things more or less. So they say when the dream is big enough, the facts don't like really matter. Or when the dream the dream is big enough, the how doesn't really matter. And it's like it's something 
I'm going to achieve and I don't care how much energy I have to put towards it. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to manifest it, you know? Faces in my head, I'm a hippie and I'm trying to get money so me and my kids can frolic in the jungle, naked, naked. Naked in nature, eating fruit. I also noticed that my goals have changed a lot and to, you know, like caring goals as well, like to help the planet, to help ah, the, oh, yeah. the people. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of yeah. naturally Watch shifted to this. Yeah. But Watch yeah. before I did have more egocentric goals, something more materialistic, something more money mm. focused. And I didn't know, even know why I need this money except my to please my ego. Yes. Now mm. I feel that. I need maybe the money the um, as a source for me to source. help more, for me yes. to expand more in this yeah. world, to reach to more people, to uh, start up my family, to like continue uh, the mindset, the consciousness uh, that I have in myself. I feel that those goals, they become more uh, focused globally on impacting the world rather than just yes. myself. Uh, <laughs> I want to add, like, um, with the money aspect, I feel like um, money is kind of like Wi-Fi or, like, electricity, in a sense. It's not really only the electricity or the Wi-Fi that has value. It's we give it value. The fact that we're doing this and the fact that we're hooked up to, like, the electric, like, what you call, that's kind of like money. It's, just only, it's only a thing to achieve something. Like, no... Actual money is like, even when I got the most money in my life, it didn't change me emotionally. Like get like getting my biggest check, I was like, okay, cool. But that that that's that's it's like water. It's like you, what are you using it for? You know what I mean? Because right. everyone could have water, but like what are you using it for? Are, are you uh, using it to shower? Are you drinking? Are you cleaning stuff? Like it's like water in a sense. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I view it. And it's not the money, it's the underlying things that the money could help, like help us achieve quicker, more or less. And I know like a lot of people like to like have like, oh, we just should be like bartering and trading, but we're not in like 1400 anymore. Like we're not in like the 1200s anymore. I'm sorry. Like we're in 2022, bro. Like it's like this money stuff is like regardless, this crypto stuff is coming up like this. And like money has, the value has changed. And I feel like people have to like make peace with that. That is a really important, you know, point to attracting money as well. Like knowing where you're going to spend it and what intentions yeah. do you have for this money. I feel that for me, like I attract more abundance uh, if I have like a vision of myself, where am I actually investing all of this? And if I have better intentions, if I have like better thoughts about where I'm going to spend it, then it attracts faster. Mm -hmm. So that could be also a tip for someone who wants to attract abundance. Yes, I think we're pretty much over everything right now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you so this much. was like definitely a beautiful, beautiful interview. Seriously, I feel, I feel like we got value. I feel like we get value from each other, but there's no the fact that people like five, 10, 15 years from now will still be able to see this. It's kind of like a cedar plant now. Like we don't really know where the energy is going. It was a beautiful experience to yeah. get through. Yeah. Uh, it was a wonderful trip, I would say even. <laughs> Every time I speak to you, I feel like I've been through a mind expansion in a way. I graved in myself some valuable messages that I am going to expand through different people that I meet in my life. Mm -hmm. You are going to expand through me, like to through different different people right now. Yeah, vice vice reversal. Like I guarantee, like everyone I speak to, they say, "Oh, yo, I had this dope." Like trust me, like I'm like trust me, like you're you're expanding on this side as well. Here I'm like so so beautiful, like so prepared for the uh, for the video, and here I'm like wearing these sports tights <laughs> with these funny socks. <laughs> it's just comfortable i really like the feeling when you can actually uh, you know stretch your body in your clothes yes. and yes. Uh, i try to wear as more comfortable clothes as i can so i can stretch in any environment because i feel that uh, you can dedicate a special time for yoga you can dedicate a special time for stretching but yeah. Essentially, I think you have to do it all the time when you're around anyone and you don't yes. have to be shy about it uh, because yeah. I could just get, you know, just take a walk and just stop and just do a stretch if I need. <laughs> yeah. Like for yeah. me, it's okay if I have the clothes, uh, yeah. the comfortable clothes to be in and do that. And if I allow myself to do that, then why not?